Hi guys, welcome back. I am back. I obviously have a baby in my arms. Um, I should probably be doing something much fancier to, you know, come back as a new mum. But instead I'm going to just film this morning from bed after feeding her and trying to get her back to sleep. Um, she was very sleepy but she was... She's struggling a little bit to get back to sleep by herself at the moment. But she's three weeks old tomorrow. Feels like a lifetime and also like it's gone extremely quickly. Um, but I think often when they come home from the hospital, not all the time, but often they're very sleepy. And she was quite sleepy for the first 10 days or so, um, or two weeks even. But she's definitely needing a little bit more help to get back to sleep now. Anyway my battery light is already flashing but I just want to say hello I'm gonna vlog today um, I'm feeling pretty good things are opening back up here in the UK and um, I really want to go to a bookshop so I think we're gonna to walk to a bookshop today um, we tried out the baby carrier yesterday and it went well she seemed to really like it so we are probably gonna put it back in that because I think that's quite convenient for book shopping nice to have the pram if you're doing a big shop I guess but if you just want to mooch about the place, I think the carrier is quite nice. So, yes, we've just had our first feed of the day. Obviously, she's been feeding throughout the night as well. And um, Zach's just gone to get ready whilst I chill with her. And then he'll come and grab her and I'll go get ready. Um, if you're wondering why my eyes are so red, it's actually not coming up so badly on camera. But it's not just because I'm tired. I am really tired, <laughs> but um, I put I used a mascara the other day that was really that really irritated my eyes. That is why my eyes are all kind of swollen and red, and I've been itching them loads, which I know I'm not supposed to do. But in the middle of the night, when I'm like half asleep, it's just so satisfying. <laughs> like it feels so good. But anyway, so yes, that's what we're doing this morning. So we've just put baby down in the snoo. We don't usually put her down for naps. In there but we've got some bits to do up here this morning it would be good to be babyless <laughs> not babyless hands-free I don't know um, she does nap in her dock top as well but sometimes not as peacefully so I'm hoping if she's in her snoo which I'll talk about a little bit more later she will have a bit more of a deep sleep in there because it keeps her moving um, Zach's brought me up some breakfast it's a bigger task going downstairs um, with the baby because there's just so much stuff and because I want to get stuff done up here today he has very kindly bought me breakfast so that's the plan is to have a little clear up it up here this morning because it's all got a little bit messy which it tends to do every like five days um, which we need to find a solution for that because it's kind of annoying refueled if you have ever breastfed you know that it makes you super hungry for me much hungrier than i ever was in pregnancy um but now i've refueled i can get ready i'm gonna try and be quick ish <laughs> i always say that and then i always fart around um but i'm gonna try and be quick ish also very exciting news for me <laughs> um Waleda have changed their skin food packaging so now it comes in a glass jar which is made of recycled glass, 85% recycled glass and I think the lid is um, recyclable as well and made of recycled material, I'm not sure but anyway I'm pleased because I didn't like using all the plastic tubs and as we know this is my favourite body moisturiser. Hi my loves, try and ignore the mess. I'm about to do a little bit of clearing up in here but I had to take a quick break to feed the baby. Um, but this is my outfit today. Got on these old and other stories trousers and this nice cos shirt and my, I always get these mixed up, I think they're Aquazira pumps. Um, 
pumps or loafers, loafers. And this is my face today. I'm using some of my new favourite products, so I thought I would just really quickly run you through them. I think I might do a little everyday makeup routine on um, either IGTV or Reels, somewhere on Instagram, basically, um, of more or less this look. I'm not wearing makeup every day, but on the days that I am, I'm wearing this, pretty much. And these are my favourite products from this look that I've been doing. First of all, obsessed with these Vive, um, I'm not actually sure, eye wands, they're called from Jamie Genevieve's um, makeup line. They sent me these and I'm obsessed with them. They're just the kind of product that I absolutely love. Basically, well, you'll see in the little tutorial that I'll do, but they're just like creamy sticks, basically. And you can just pop them on the eye and just blend it out and it's so quick and easy. Nothing complex, it, they blend beautifully. I'm wearing camel on my eye today and that's all I'm wearing. Um, these are some Vive products that I bought myself. bought these a few weeks ago. I um, bought a couple of her blushes because um, I was just hashtag influenced by everyone um, who had been wearing these because they just look so nice and I can confirm they are a lovely, blendable um, powder blush. I really need some new blushes in my life because I think I would got stuck in a bit of a rut. And I love blush these days, it's like one of my favourite makeup products. Um, so I got a couple of her darker shades, I got Piazza which I've been wearing more often. Um, partly because she described it as like that sort of flush you get when you're tanned. Now I have not seen the sun properly for <laughs> a very long time. And I think it will look really nice when I'm actually a bit tanned. But, you know, we can fake it till we make it um, for now. And the other shade I got was Molbeck, which is more of like a pinky um, shade. And I don't know what you describe, my brain's not working. It looks like this. Yes, I decided to get these instead of the pinkier ones because I feel like I have quite a lot of light pink blushes and those were shades that I didn't really have in my blush selection. For bronzer, I've been using the Huda Beauty Tantor in light which I've had for ages. I think I bought this myself. I've had it for ages, um, but I'm just getting into it now. It's like a cream bronzer. Is that all my new favorite things? Oh yes, and the final thing, the final thing is I finally got my hands on this, um, which is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze. I really enthusiastically stuck a spoolie into this, and um, it's a lot softer than I thought it would be, so be warned. Um, it's not like a hard sort of product, it's quite soft, um, but I've been loving it for my brows. So that is um, a really quick run through of some of my new favourite products. So yes, that's me for the day, I think I'm going to wear my Lulu Studio blazer that Zach got me um, for Christmas, which is down there. I am sort of half fitting into some of my trousers, but not all of them <laughs> at the moment. Um, and I've also found that with my new breastfeeding boobs which are absolutely massive and I hate dressing big boobs it's like my one of my least favorite things I need I can't really wear any t-shirts that are f soft and flowy like particularly on the shoulders I need something a little bit more structured so I'm gonna need to find some new t-shirts I think for the next few months um, but finding a good t-shirt that's gonna be structured enough on the shoulder to balance out my boobs is going to be like finding a needle in a haystack, I think. So wish me luck on that one. But yes, I'm finding a lot of my t-shirts just are not working for me at the moment. Just They just make me look too slope-shouldered and they're just not sitting right. But it does feel really good to be in at least some of my clothes again and feeling a bit more like myself. I definitely do feel a lot more like myself. Um, and I am glad I'm not dressing a big bump anymore that much is true oh final thing actually my lovely manicurist Priya has done a collaboration with Manny Me for um, stick on gels and basically they fit them for you so you do a little um, fitting online fitting for your nails and your nail beds and they'll send you out like um, the right size for you and she's done a collaboration so we've got some flames and We've also got these little roses, which are really cute. So I think I might try these out at some point. I'm not seeing Priya for a few weeks still, even though she's obviously um, opening back up for appointments. And that is because um, my appointments with her tend to be a bit longer. And I would basically have liked to have started pumping um, 
so that someone can feed the baby whilst I'm gone but I didn't want to start pumping too early messing with my milk supply because right now we seem to be in a good balance and I've been really really lucky with my breastfeeding experience and also just with the baby she is a really good chilled baby so far I know things can change they go through regressions and leaps and um just the way they are changes like the amount she's changed over just three weeks is huge um and sort of her even her little habits and things over those three weeks have changed so so yes I know things can change but um so far we have been so so lucky with her she is a dream um obviously you know it's hard sometimes <laughs> But um, in the grand scheme, she has been really, really good and breastfeeding has been good too. So, and I know how hard it can be for so many people, people I watch online, people I know in real life. So I am so grateful for that. Um, it has made life a lot easier than it might have been. Yeah, we're in, a good, we're in a good flow at the minute. It's still early days, so I didn't want to start pumping too soon. I would like to because she's quite an erratic feeder at the moment. I know that that will settle down but you know I can feed her and then you know half an hour later she can be ravenous again um, and sort of inconsolable until she is fed so I don't want to put anyone through that that I leave her with so yes I would like to be able to have someone else give her a feed if she needs it whilst I'm gone and my like I said my appointments with Priya tend to be a little bit longer I have booked some things in which I know will be considerably quicker um, for the next few weeks so it's not quite such a risk but yes for any sort of longer periods periods of time I would like to start a little milk stash at some stage anyway that was a very long and rambly reason as to why I'm not getting my nails done anytime soon I am going to try these press on gels I think at some point if I can find the time Zach did most of the clearing up in here um, whilst I was getting ready which is very nice but I'm going to quickly speed around the bedroom and neaten it up in there and then going to go and have some lunch so we are finally out of the house it took a while today because she was having quite a peaceful nap in her dog's hole whilst we had lunch and kind of reluctant to disturb her when she's having a nice nap but anyway we are off now to foils because I really want to look at some kids books and I know that they have a really good kids section. Um, mostly I want to get some sort of newborn appropriate books or like really early days appropriate books. So ones that have fun textures, um, just simple things for her to look at and with bright colours and contrast and all the sort of things that young babies like so that's what we're gonna do I want to look at those and I'll look at some things for me too just <laughs> for fun but um, my Kindle has really been a life saver at the moment I'm getting more use out of it because obviously you can use it one-handed I'm trying not to look at my phone during night feeds because you can just end up scrolling aimlessly for hours at a time I'm also trying to do it a little bit in the day but I don't know less successful in the day but so I'm reading on my Kindle because obviously it's backlit so I can read in the dark and I can do it one handed and I need to pick a new book for my Kindle actually. But yes, I will also have a look for the books for me. In the daytime it's a little bit easier if she's napping on me to read actual books because obviously there's, there's daylight. So off we go to foils. I'm very excited. First time in a bookshop for ages. We were going to walk somewhere today. All strapped in here. <laughs> She's very cozy in there. Good morning. It is the next day. I obviously did not vlog after we went to the bookshop yesterday because when we got back to the, the car, um, little one did a poo explosion, sat in her car seat. So we had to change her in the back of the car. 
she had to have a change of clothes. She was not very happy about it. And then she was not very happy because I wanted to get home really. Even though I knew she would be upset about that on the way home and she was upset. <laughs> um, so she basically fed for the rest of the evening, I think, as if to say, never do that to me again, ma'am. So it's the next day. I hoped that I would get away with not getting crepey eyelids from the reaction to the mascara, but alas, they have gone a bit textured now. <laughs> so I apologise for that. Today I'm not doing makeup or anything, not doing an outfit. I'm gonna have a chill day at home. Um, we've had a couple of days where we've been out and about and I feel like I just wanna chill with the baby today um, and make sure she gets good naps and all of that kind of stuff. I put some new sheets in her snoo, which she very much enjoyed last night. Um, it came with the white one. So um, I was gifted the snoo, but I did buy these sheets myself, um, which I think are really cute. She does, I try and prevent her spitting up as much as possible in the snoo um, when I put her down in the middle of the night, but she does spit up in it sometimes, so I do like to change the sheets. And we only had one sheet, I think, so I wanted to get some new stuff. And obviously, um, I got some sacks as well. Although, thinking about it, probably could have got away with not buying sacks as well, because they tend to get less dirty unless she really spits up lots and she gets it kind of around her shoulders. But anyway, I wanted to chat to you a little bit about the snoo. This was sent to me, but when I say I was on the brink of buying it myself, I was literally on the brink of buying it myself. Yes, but it was gifted. This is kind of what it looks like. Excuse the mess everywhere. You can see my breastfeeding pillow there. So it looks pretty chic. That's my basket of snacks underneath. Let me turn it on for you because I, th I honestly find it kind of hilarious. Um, obviously, I showed you it a little bit yesterday with her in it, but basically you can use the app or you can use the button at the end and just um, turn it on. So as you can see, it's like a mechanical bassinet, which you call it mechanical, smart bassinet, which soothes the baby. This is level one, it goes all the way up to level four. Um, if it looks pretty intense, that's because it is pretty intense. You can hear it also does white noise. But if you've ever tried to soothe a cranky baby, um, you'll know that they actually like <laughs> quite a lot of movement. So um, that's what the snoo provides. It does a rocking movement. And I remember vividly when Indy was a baby, my stepdad, they had um, like a bassinet which did rock on I don't know what the word would be. It did kind of rock, basically. <laughs> Obviously not automatically. And I remember seeing my stepdad half hang out the bed <laughs> to rock it whilst he was half asleep because um, it does help soothe them and keep them to sleep and help them when you transition them from your arms to the bassinet to um, help them drift off by themselves. So yes, <laughs> with that image in my mind, when I heard about the snoo, I was like, this sounds like it would be a very useful tool for the new parent. So you don't have to half hang out of your bed and rock the baby. And also when we were in the hospital and she was in her little plastic bin that they put babies in, that also rocked a little bit. And it definitely helped that first night we were in hospital to just rock her, um, really helped soothe her. Let me put this down so I don't have to hold. So yes, it isn't a very expensive option. Um, I know that you can rent it in the US, which is useful. I don't know if they'll introduce something like that here in the UK as well. Um, but yes, it only lasts really up until they're about six months until they outgrow it. So it is a pricey um, option. For me, like I said, I was on the brink of buying it. For me, I was thinking if I could get use out of it for multiple babies, then that would sort of <laughs> eke out its life a little bit more. Um, so we'll store it somewhere safe. Um, hopefully for next time when she outgrows it but yeah I have to say I am really liking it I was worried she'd be one of those babies that doesn't like the snoo and they do exist I'm afraid but yeah I have to say I'm really really liking it um, it is not magical <laughs> it won't make your newborn sleep through the night from the day you bring them home um, but what I find with the snoo is that it helps us get her towards the end of her longest cycle before she wakes up for a feed and obviously you don't want your newborn to sleep through the night actually because they do need to wake up to feed because they need to put on weight and it's healthy for them to do so so yes <laughs> you don't want a magical solution to night feedings as hard as they are if i was to put her down get her deeply asleep and then put her down in her docker tot or something down when we're all downstairs um she would sleep in there maximum probably about two hours 
but her longest naps and her longest sleeps are about three to four hours. Four is really pushing it. <laughs> so what I find with this new is that it helps get us towards that number and it helps Zach and I get closer to three hour stretches of uninterrupted sleep, which is a godsend. <laughs> As a new parent, three to four hours honestly sounds like the longest time when you've got a newborn. <laughs> so yes. And yeah, I imagine that will change as she gets older again it will help her as she drops some of those night feeds <laughs> um, it will help get her more towards those five six hour stretches um, as she gets a bit bigger I don't know if that's true but that's how I imagine things will go I hope things will go yes so for me it's invaluable because yeah if she did have I think around 10 days I think she was going through a bit of a growth spurt she was waking up um, closer to every two hours and it is brutal I know that for some babies they're waking up every hour so what I just find that the snoo helps to keep her closer to the longer cycles and helps me get an hour more sleep here and there which is yeah truly invaluable <laughs> so future editing means um popping in here you guys because there are a few things in this vlog which I felt I could have expanded on and just need a little bit of commentary because you know my brain is not fully functioning at the moment but anyway something I wanted to talk about with the snoo um, I'm not obligated to say any of this stuff obviously it was gifted to me but I, I actually think this is a really important part of the snoo and a reason why I really really like it is that in terms of safe sleep um, it's a really really good option. Safe sleep guidelines seem like they're very um, straightforward but in reality I feel like I've got differing advice from different places. I don't know if the safe sleep guidelines are different in different countries. I feel like my NCT guidelines and my lullaby trust guidelines are different from other ones that I've read. Yeah it's a bit of a minefield but what I like about the snoo is that it gives you one of the best possible safe sleep environments for your baby. With the snoo the baby is swaddled um, in a really simple swaddle, you like just um, velcro their sort of arms down by their sides. It's a bit sad. I don't really love putting her in it, but I actually think she does enjoy it more than it looks. And then you zip up the swaddle. So her hips are free. Um, that's really important where the swaddle is not to restrict the movement of their hips, I think. So she's swaddled up. She's not going to startle herself awake. Hopefully she's going to feel cosy and comfy. But the swaddle is also attached to the sides of the snoo. So she can't wriggle her way up or down. She can't wriggle her way underneath covers of any kind. Um, she is secure in the middle of the snoo, which I just love. It also means she really can't roll over, you know, um, even in the swaddle because she's literally attached to the sides of it. Um, it sounds quite intense, <laughs> uh, especially if you're not familiar with safe sleep guidelines, but, you know, there's no extra blankets, there's no nothing. So um, it does give you as much peace of mind as you could possibly have. Of course, you're never going to have full peace of mind, I think, when you've got a newborn and you know all the risks about sleeping um, but it does give you some that you're doing the best you're putting your baby in the best possible environment for them so um, I really really love it for safe sleep as well anyway my loves uh, I'm gonna go downstairs now I've just been getting ready obviously Zach's got the baby downstairs um, I thought I had something else to talk to you about oh my books let's quickly show you the books I got that was a little bit more of a speedy browse than it usually is when I go to foils because I didn't want to push it too much with her and I'm glad I didn't because we still ended up with a few tears in the car as I said. Um, I'm not going to show you her books because they're just literally board books. I tried to find the most tactile um, baby books that I could. Some of them are just so crap. Um, like I find <laughs> some baby books are just rubbish so yeah, I tried to find things that were tactile, that had lots of nice big descriptive words and stuff, um, but in a fairly simple setting. We'll see how we go with those. She's obviously absolutely tiny at the moment. We haven't really got a proper bedtime routine because it's really early days, so she just goes to bed when we go to bed. But yeah, I might try introducing um, books when she's in her sort of waking periods. But I'm finding it hard to fit everything into her waking periods, like tummy time and all that sort of thing, because if she's awake, quite often she's feeding or she's a little bit cranky because she wants to be fe feeding um she doesn't have a lot of 
super chill wake time. I mean, to be fair, she does for such a small baby, but in general, babies at this age don't have a lot of super chill wake time, I don't think. So yeah, anyway, boring, boring, boring. <laughs> I bought three books. Um, I bought my first David Sedaris. Um, here's a collection of essays, Calypso. I read the like little introductions to um, some of these essays and, and I very much enjoyed them. Um, it just seems like it'd be accessible, a bit funny, um, and just like a nice, funny, easy read um, that hopefully will be quite enlightening as well, maybe, that I can do at the moment. Also, I love the cover. It's textured. Feels like wood. Um, I also got Nobber by Oshin Fagan, who is an Irish author. I hope that I'm pronouncing his name right. Oh, I didn't read you the synopsis of this one. Let me read you that. When he buys a beach house on the Carolina coast, Sedaris envisions long, relaxing vacations spent playing board games and lounging in the sun with those he loves most most and life at the sea section as he names the vacation home is exactly as idyllic as he imagined except for one tiny vexing realization it's impossible to take a vacation from yourself so we love that i know that lizzie or shot from the street loves david starris and i think she loved that collection so i'm very intrigued by it anyway back to nobber synopsis an ambitious noble and his three serving men travel through the irish countryside in the stifling summer of 1348 using the advantage of the plague which has collapsed society to buy up large swathes of property and land. They come upon Nobber, a tiny town whose only living inhabitants seem to be an egotistical bureaucrat, his volatile wife, a naked blacksmith and a beautiful Gaelic hostage. Meanwhile, a band of marauding gales are roaming around using the confusion of the sickness to pillage and reclaim lands that once belonged to them. Loving books set hundreds of years ago at the moment. So um, this was already on my want to read and then I read the synopsis and I was like, ah. Oh. Yes, I do want to read that, and I want to read that soon, so that was Nobber. And then a bit of an impulse buy this one, because I don't think I'm going to read it anytime soon. <laughs> but um, this is the Border Trilogy by Cormac McCarthy. This is going to be intense. So yeah, like I say, I'm not sure I'm going to read this anytime soon. <laughs> um, it's set in the Old West. Uh, I'm just going to read you the synopsis. In the vanishing world of the Old West, two cowboys begin an epic adventure and their own coming-of-age stories. In All the Pretty Horses, John Grady Cole's search for a future takes him across the Me Mexican border to a job as a ranch hand and an ill-fated romance. The Crossing is the story of 16-year-old Billy Parham as he sets, who sets off on a perilous journey across the mountains of Mexico, accompanied only by a lone wolf. Eventually, the two come together in the cities of the plain in a stunning tale of loyalty and love. So I've read The Road and I actually liked it. I know it's a bit of a controversial book, I guess, or Cormac McCarthy in general is not a controversial author, just one that you either love or hate. But I remember quite liking The Road. I read it a long time ago, so I might have changed my mind about McCarthy since then. <laughs> He's quite brutal and violent and quite, I just want to say masculine. <laughs> um, so we'll see how I got on with that one. But those were the books that I bought. And, oh, reading update, because I said yesterday that I needed a get a new kindle book but i didn't tell you what i just finished which is the mermaid and the black conch um oh my goodness what's her name by M monique jaffrey i find it a bit harder when i read on kindle because you don't see the author's name like every time you open the book okay monique roffey so she is a trinidadian british author i think um, I, one thing I love about the Kindle at the moment is getting samples of books because, like I've said a million times recently, trying to be ruthless, am just being ruthless with what I'm reading because it's, I don't want to be reading things that I'm not really enjoying. Particularly for these night feeds, I feel like I, I want something that you sort of like, tiny bit of you looks forward to reading, um, when you wake up for the night feed. Um, that's the kind of book you need, I think, <laughs> to make them a little bit more bearable. So I read um, Magpie Lane, which is a thriller by Lucy Atkins, which I really enjoyed. It didn't end up being as amazing as I thought it would be, but in general the writing was quite engaging, so um, I just enjoyed reading it and looked forward to reading it when I woke up to my night feeds, within reason. Um, but yeah, The Mermaid in the Black Conch started off really promising and hence why I downloaded the actual book after I got the sample. Generally ended up being a bit of a disappointing experience for me which I'm really sad about um, because yeah I really wanted to love it but sadly, oh sadly I did not. I 
I'm gonna try out, what did I just get a sample of? I've already forgotten. Flowers for Algernon, which you all have recommended me countless times, um, and I thought might make quite an engaging read. So I'm gonna try that out on my Kindle next. Anyway, I know that Zach wants me to go downstairs because he is getting hungry. Um, so let me go and look after this child. Hi all, just come into the bathroom to show you me uh, trying out the Ergo Baby Aura Wrap. Um, there's so many carriers on the market and we just decided to go with the tried and tested Ergo Baby ones. So we also have the 360, is it called? The more structured one for properly out and about that will last her for years as well. She can like outward face and all sorts of things. This is like just one long piece of material essentially so I don't think we needed to buy the Ergo Baby one to be fair but this is Aura and she's very cosy in there, very nicely. Um, tucked up against me. She's a little bit fussy today. I think she might be going through some sort of developmental leap. Um, she's just feeling very gassy as well, I think. <laughs> so um, it's nice to have her um, on me like this and then I can do things. Whilst we're here, um, I'm going to just very quickly show you the these. I did them so badly. I do really quite like the peel on, press on gel vibe but I've done them so, so badly. So it's not a reflection on Manny Me or Priya's um, design. It's me having put them on terribly. Okay guys, I have to like formally apologize to Priya here and Manny Me because the reason I put these on so badly, I put them on upside down, okay? When I've gone to Priya, I've always had flames come from the top of the nail and I think my baby brain just could not process that actually in the case of this manicure the flames are coming from the bottom of the nail I should have known because if you look at this other set obviously you're supposed to have the square bit at the top of the nail not at the bottom of the nail no wonder I was having trouble um, making it look all clean and fitted I'm so sorry <laughs> to Priya and Manny Me because I've wasted a set now but I'm going to put on this other set for you quickly um, just so you can see how easy they are because I reckon if you actually had a good fit and you had them around the right way um, they would, it was, it's a really good option actually these stick on gels yeah it's I mean sometimes I think I'm handling this sleep deprivation thing okay um, and then I do things like this which just defy logic and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> you need more sleep. <laughs> I just spilled my entire coffee in my bedroom as well. The baby's asleep in there, so I can't use the carpet cleaner yet. Um, and I've got about three sips left of it. Uh, so that's also upsetting. So that's just where my wife's got me today. But I will put on these nails for you on camera now. My nails are looking a bit rough, actually. Because they're getting long, and I don't love them long when they're not, like, filed into... A nice shape. I could file them into a nice shape. I know I could, but you know, <laughs> I prefer to leave that to the professionals. Um, but I also kind of want to keep them long-ish, so that Priya has a bit more to work with when I go and when I do go and see her. So, yes, yeah, so hopefully this will fix all of my problems. Is to put these on. my loves are coming back in um, before the end of this video in a different top because the baby was just sick all over me but I realise I don't actually say her name in this video we have been calling her baby quite a lot to be fair I think that's quite normal um, because sometimes it feels funny giving a tiny baby like a proper name but her name is Inez and we just really liked it it was like the first name that we sort of agreed on and one of the early ones that we liked and I went back and forth on it throughout my pregnancy but in the end it was the only one that felt right I think so yes she's called Inez yes she's beginning to grow into it a little bit more now so we're calling it her we're calling her it a little bit more also so that she knows her name <laughs> um but yes I didn't really intentionally not say her name in this video but that is her name 
Right, my love, so we are winding down for the evening. So I think I'm going to finish this vlog here. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our first vlog with a baby. It's not going to be all baby, baby, baby forever. Baby product stuff. Obviously, I'm going to mention things as I go, like I have been doing in this vlog. Um, if anything occurs to me as being particularly noteworthy. Obviously, babies come with so much stuff. But I think I'm going to do like a little series on my blog just of things that I'm using and enjoying um, and I'll write a bit more on there as opposed to doing any dedicated videos or taking you through everything that we use that sort of thing because I don't want to bore anyone who's not interested in that content. We are gonna have some dinner and you know feed this baby and hope that she goes to sleep at a decent hour. Um, so yeah thank you guys for watching today and I will see you again very soon. Bye!